and welcome to the Robbie G podcast. I'm Robbie G, your host of the day, and we are going to go over some fun stuff. We're going to talk sports, we're going to talk celebrity news, we're going to talk movies. We're going to have a good time. Let's get into it right now though. If today is your birthday, happy birthday, and here are celebrities that are sharing birthdays with you today and also ones that are celebrating this weekend. Uh, today we've got Sean Mendez turns 26. Boxer Ryan Garcia is also 26. WNBA star Asia Wilson turns 28. Actor Dustin Hoffman is 87 today. Uh, former Chicago Cub Anthony Rizzo is 35. WWE superstar Shayna Baszler is 44. And Jay-Z Chavez from NSYNC turns 48. Uh, tomorrow for Friday, Anna Kendrick turns 39. Bill Skarsgård turns 34. WWE star Alexa Bliss turns 33. Uh, Deion Sanders, Neon Dion turns 57. The great actor Sam Elliott hits 80. Fashion designer Michael Kors will be 65. Um, and then Saturday, we've got NBA star John Morant. Is going to be 25. Mama June Shannon turns 45. Antonia Banderas will be 65. Jake Stone, 39. Actress Joanna Garcia is going to be 45. WWE superstar Wade Barrett turns 44. And Philadelphia 76er and former Chicago Bull Andre Drummond turns 31. And one more for Sunday. Um, let's see who's going to have birthdays on Sunday. Chris Hemsworth will be 41. Hulk Hogan will turn 71. Podcast host Joe Rogan turns 56. Uh, let's see if I can find any other good ones for that day. Basketball player Patty Mills turns 35. Also, um, this weekend would have been Whitney Houston's birthday, too. I got to throw that in there. Um, she's no longer with us, but it's really sad. And I think that's it for Sunday, really. I don't see any other really big names on here. I guess everybody's technically a big name to somebody, but nobody that I know and I don't think any of you know. Oh, wow. Eric Carmen, pop singer, uh, died this year. He would have had a birthday this year, too. Uh, that's pretty crazy. So, yeah. Those are the celebrities that are show, uh, celebrating birthdays all weekend. If today or this weekend is your birthday, uh, make sure you make it a great one. Let's go into the show now. Uh, we've got some breaking news today out of the Chicago White Sox camp. The Chicago White Sox have fired uh, Skipper Pedro. Uh, he is gone. That's it. No more him. That's sad. You know, after the season that team had, you can't even be mad that he's gone. The guy had 28 wins this year. You know, it was just pretty bad. I mean, we can't even... Can you even be upset that Pedro Garfal, Garfal is gone? I mean, if you're a White Sox fan, you are rejoicing today. And it should have been sooner. I mean, look... He went on a 20-game losing streak with that team. And I'm not saying it was all him. I mean, obviously the players are out there and they play, uh, but come on. It's just ridiculous to be that bad as a manager and still have your job. So I think he had like 190 losses in two years. That's a lot. For a team, so for now they are going to go with an interim coach. 
um, brought manager for the rest of the season because they only got what is it, August eighth. They only got a month and a half ish left on the season, um, so they're not going to hire anybody now. They'll definitely wait till after the off during the off season and hire a new manager, but. I'm glad he's gone. I think all Sox fans are glad he's gone. Hey, maybe they turn it around for a couple of you know weeks and win some games with the new manager. Who knows? Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, in the football news, because that's what we'll be talking about now, football, I want to kick it off with saying I am very sad today. I am wearing his jersey, Big Nick Foles. They call him something else, but I'm not saying it on my show. Big Nick Foles has retired from football. One of the greatest backups um, and starter. He was a good starter, too. He has retired. He, of course, won a Super Bowl uh, with the Philadelphia Eagles. Took them as a backup to win it and won it. And then, of course, he played uh, for the Chicago Bears for a couple of seasons. He had the Indianapolis Colts was his last team he was with in 2022. Um, He was with Jacksonville. Two stints with Philadelphia. He was with St. Louis and Kansas City all in his career. Um, With the Bears, he did pretty decent here. You know, obviously it was the Bears, you know, and stuff. His career numbers, um, he played 71 games. He was 62%, 14,227 yards, uh, 82 touchdowns, and 47 interceptions. And his... uh, Rating was, his RTG was 86.2. So, not bad. Not a bad career for, he was a career backup. Um, He did start a little bit here and there. Of course, you know, everybody knows he played a lot of games for Philly in the year that he won it as a backup. But, uh, he will be definitely missed. Um, I'm going to miss Nick Foles. You know, in Chicago, he did what he could, you know, I mean, he was pretty much a backup, he came in, he played nine games in one season, 1,852 yards, 10 touchdowns, eight interceptions, not shabby for a guy that came in and played nine games out of, you know, at the time, 16, so it was a sad day, Um, but, you know, like I said, life goes on, but we'll miss you, Nick Foles, thank you for your service, Uh, moving on, Hard Knocks, everybody's seen it, Obviously, by now, I'm sure, and if you haven't, you're watching this weekend, skip through a few minutes of this, um, and then, you know, because there is some spoilers. It was a great, I'm going to give you two seconds. One, one thousand, two. Okay. So, for the ones who stayed and want to hear this, yeah, Hard Knock started this week on Tuesday. It was an amazing episode. It really showed a lot into the insight of the Chicago Bears. Uh, we got to see, you know, Caleb Williams coming to Chicago um, on draft day, excited. Roma Dunze coming here, excited. I really believe that this team is going to be a very well versed team. And the more I see the Hard Knocks episode, it's only one episode in, but I'm pretty sure that all of us got a good glimpse of what we are seeing. Hold on one second. <laughs> I love when ads pop up in my gallery on my phone. That's crazy. Um, that was not an ad. But if it is, and you understood what they were saying, go buy whatever they're giving out. Uh, yeah, so... Like I was saying, Hard Knocks really gives you an inside look at what the team was thinking, what they're preparing for. Uh, we got to see... Um, Jonathan Owens go and see his wife play, uh, or not play, uh, go to the Olympics and win her gold medals. So, you know, it it was cool to see the Bears as a family say, you know what, you need to be there for your wife. It's preseason. It's the Hall of Fame game. None of the starters are going to play anyway, so it really does not matter. Uh, You go and you spend time with your wife and watch her win gold and bring it home to the Chicago Bears family. I love seeing that. Um, Another thing I like seeing was uh, Caleb Williams owning up to the fact that he had his struggles at the beginning of camp. He's still going to have his struggles. It is a rookie season. Okay, rookie season. This is not 
a seasoned veteran yet. He is not the guy that's going to go out there and not make mistakes. Nobody does. Every quarterback does. Even C.J. Stroud had his struggles last year. And he was, what, a number three pick? So, I mean, yeah, even him. Now, here I was looking at projecting NFL rookie leaders, passing yards, and touchdowns. Okay, so these are the ones... I think that some of these numbers, well, at least one of these numbers is inflated because I don't see this happening. So let's go from five to one. Bo Nix from the Broncos. They're projecting him to get 3,165 yards and 16 touchdowns. This doesn't say anything about interceptions, just touchdowns. Um, Drake May at number four for the Patriots. They think he's going to get 3,378 yards and 17 touchdowns. Now, is Drake May even going to start? Don't they have Jacoby Brisket or somebody over there in the Patriots that's going to start? They already said they have a starter. He's going to be a backup. So unless this guy gets hurt right away and Drake May pops in, I don't see him getting that many yards. Uh, number three, Jaden Daniels. Now, if people are going to say number three, yeah, just wait for number two. We all know who number one is. And we all know that he most likely will be number one. Um... Number three, Jaden Daniels for the Commanders. They're saying 3,457 yards and 16 touchdowns. I don't understand why all these quarterbacks that are supposed to be studs all have like 15 to 16, 17 touchdowns on the year. Number two, J.J. McCarthy for the Vikings. Is he even going to start? I don't even think he's going to be the starter. They're projecting him at 3,527 yards and 19 touchdowns. Is he going to start? We don't know yet. I, I would have waited until we know who the starters are and then projected this. And number one, of course, Chicago Bears, Caleb Williams. 3,532 yards, 23 touchdowns. He's getting over 30. He's definitely getting over 30. He's getting, you know, he's going to be the first Bears quarterback to have more than 30 touchdowns in a season. I project him. This is my projection now. This is without seeing him this weekend. We're going to see him most likely. Uh, now, as of this recording, I have not heard it. I'm going to look it up really quick now to see if they've announced it yet. I have not heard from Eberflus yet saying anything about if Caleb's going to start and the starters are going to play yet. I'm sure they are because he did say he's getting them reps. So I'm sure they're going to start. Um, but yeah, I can see the 3,500 yards I'm good with for Caleb Williams. The 23 touchdowns, that's a little, that's kind of fewer. But then again, like you said too, they have a good running back. So is it going to be a mix of run and pass? You know, we're going to see exactly what Shane Waldron does in there. Is he going to run it? Is he going to pass? Is it going to be a mix? We'll see what happens. But I'm calling at least 33 touchdowns out of him. I mean, there's people who are saying, oh, he needs 4,000 yards and 40 touchdowns. No, he really, really does not need that to be, have a good rookie year. If he has 3,500 yards and 30 touchdowns, he will be the best Bears rookie quarterback in the history of of the Bears franchise. He will be the best quarterback in the Bears franchise. No Bears quarterback has gotten over 30 touchdowns in a season. No Bears quarterback has ever gotten 40 touchdowns in a season. Think about that stat. Never in the history of the NFL has a Chicago Bears quarterback gotten over 40 touchdowns. And over 4,000 yards ever. That's a sad stat. That's a sad stat. That is not how you quarterback a team. You have to get stuff like that. So let me look this up really quick and see exactly what they're... So according to what I just saw, the Buffalo Bills announced Josh Allen and the rest of the starters will play one quarter versus the Bears on Saturday, which means Caleb Williams will 
play a quarter because they're not going to have Josh Allen out there. And then Caleb Williams, the rookie, is not going to is going to sit out or play one series. If Eberflus is smart, he will say, okay, they're playing one quarter. We're playing one quarter. We're going to match up the two star quarterbacks. Uh, we have a number one pick versus the number seven pick in the 2018 draft. Let's do it. Uh, let's have a good game out there, a good first quarter, and go from there. So, yes, uh, most likely, as of this recording, you should know if he's starting or not because they'll announce it usually late morning, early afternoon, which it is 12 o'clock in the afternoon when I'm recording this right now. So they should be making the announcement soon. So by the time this airs at 5 p.m., there should be a definite uh, will Caleb Williams and the starters play. Most likely, yes, that will happen. Uh, so we will see that. Let me uh, do this. So on TikTok every year, well, at least last year I did it. During the regular season, I pick my winners of every game and post it there. And then I put my record. I'm not doing that for preseason yet. I'm going to do that for the regular season. But I am going to do it on my show every week. So let's go over the games and I'll pick my winners of the preseason games. The reason I don't do it on TikTok is it's preseason. It doesn't count. I picked last week on here that the Bears were going to win. The Bears look great. You know, not much to talk about. It was the Hall of Fame game. They went out there. They did their thing. Um, they scored 21 points. Rippon is awesome. He needs to be one of the top three quarterbacks on this team. In fact, if he has a preseason the rest of the time like this, I would say number two behind Caleb Williams, and then number three if you want to keep um, Tyson Bajan. That's fine, too, uh, or Tyler Bajan. Yeah, keep him as a number three. I've never been a fan of Bajan. I, I don't know. He, to me, came out. He looked kind of stale last year. I know he was a rookie, but everyone was hyping him up to be Justin Fields' savior, and he was going to do this, and he was going to do that, and he didn't do this or that. He was very lackluster. If Rippin keeps playing the way he did in the preseason, and he's a vet. And I believe that you need a veteran behind your um, rookie. And he is a veteran. So I think he needs to make the team. Bajan, and I think, who's the other quarterback rookie guy? I don't even know who he is. He got like one one possession or something because they went to the storm, canceled the game. Uh, so Bears did win. I was right. I was 1-0 on my preseason picks last week. Uh, 1-0 on the Hall of Fame game. So let's go through this list and see who's going to win this week. All right, so here we go. Preseason kicks off today. That's right, Thursday night, 6 p.m., uh, Lions and Giants in New York. So we'll get to see the Lions uh, play against Malik Neighbors and Daniel Jones and the Giants. We'll see. Will they play? We don't know. I'm not, I can't see who plays for those teams, so we'll see. Also, another preseason game later today. Uh, Panthers and Patriots will play each other at the same time, 6 o'clock. Uh, also, tomorrow, there's going to be a couple of games at 6 o'clock. Falcons and Dolphins, Texans and Steelers, and then at 6.30 tomorrow, Eagles at the Ravens. Uh, so we got preseason football tomorrow. Then, of course, Saturday, the Commanders at the Jets. Will Aaron Rodgers start a few, se a couple of series? I think he should after coming off that injury. He needs to get a better rapport with his team. So I'm hoping he plays and at least gets a series or two in there, uh, maybe even a quarter. Look, you just came off an Achilles injury. You don't know how you're going to play. You don't want to be thrown out there on a Monday. I think it's a Monday night football game again for the uh, the Jets. That's horrible. Uh, so Saturday, 11 a.m., Commanders at Jets. Uh, noon games on Saturday, Bears at the Bills, uh, Raiders at the Vikings at 3, Packers play at the Browns at 325, and here's the funny thing, I will be in Lake Geneva this weekend on vacation with my family, we leave Friday and come back on Monday, and so I'll be out there when the Packers play the Browns uh, for their first game of the season, uh, preseason, so that's kind of funny. Uh, Saturday night, we got Chiefs at Jaguars, uh, Buccaneers at the Bengals, 49ers at the Titans, uh, Seahawks at the Chargers, Saints at the Cardinals, and then Sunday, there's two games, uh, Broncos at the Colts at noon, and then the 3.30 game is the Cowboys at the Rams. So we got preseason football 
all season or all thing long. I'm taking the uh, Lions over the Giants tonight. I will take the Panthers. No, I'll take the Patriots over the Panthers tonight. Uh, tomorrow, I've got the Dolphins over the Falcons. I've got the Texans beating the Steelers. I've got the Eagles losing to the Ravens. So, Ravens winning that one. I've got the Commanders with an upset over the Jets. On Saturday, I got the Bears over the Bills. I've got the Raiders over the Vikings. I've got the Browns beating the Packers. Uh, let's see. I'll take the Chiefs over the Jags. I'll take the Buccaneers over the Bengals. I got the 49ers over the Titans. I'll take the Seahawks over the Chargers. I'll take the Saints over the Cardinals. Uh, Sunday games, I got the Colts over the Broncos. And the Cowboys will beat the Rams. So... That's my picks. I'm not even writing them down. I'll just try to remember who I picked. Um, because, like I said, this is preseason. I'm just having fun with it. Uh, so next week we'll find out what is going on uh, for next week's preseason games. And we'll talk more about that. It was amazing to see Steve Mongo McMichael um, get put into the uh, Football Hall of Fame, the NFL Hall of Fame, on Saturday night. That was uh a really good treat to see that he well deserved it uh they did it from his home uh with misty by his side and of course um a couple of the 85 bears were there with him uh that were hall of famers so it was amazing to see that um mago was amazing he was great he's a great player he was even good in the wrestling ring um he had a good bar in Romeoville, the next town over from me. So, I mean, seeing that really made me tear up because to see a guy who won a Super Bowl and who was that big, bad, and tough looking so frail and you could just see, like, he was just staring into space. Like, he, I think, inside knows that he made the Hall of Fame, but at the same time, he was, he's so out of it that he doesn't really, like, know what's fully going on. I think deep down he does, but, like, in his brain, he was kind of, like, just looking around. Uh, but seeing him in the gold jacket, seeing the Hall of Fame blanket covering him, um, seeing them unveil his statue in front of him was amazing and the man deserves it the man deserved it years ago when he could have spoke on his own and said what he wanted to say to the bears fans um i was glad he made it in before he was you know before he passes away because i don't you know seeing him out there i don't think it's gonna be that much longer um obviously als is really taking his toll on him and i think as the days go by he deteriorates more and more, but he fought and he wanted to see himself make the Hall of Fame and he did. So congratulations to Steve Mongo McMichael. Congratulations to Devin Hester. You really were ridiculous with every single run back that you did. Um, and also congratulations to Julius Peppers. You three deserve to get in there. You were all bears for life. And uh, yeah. So, it was amazing. Um, the new kickoff rule, I'll be talking about more about that next week, but I don't know. I, I want to see it again this weekend. I want to see if players are getting a little more used to it. So, we'll see what happens there. Um, I have a list that I found of the top uh, 90. It's like all the stadiums. And I wanted to go through the top 30. Um, I'm not going to go through all of them. Um I'll do a few that did not make the top 30, which kind of made me mad. The United Center um, came in number 41. That's bullcrap. I think that should definitely be in the top 20. And I'm not even biased because I'm a Bulls and Hawks fan, but just the Madhouse on Madison, that is the place. If you watch a Hawks game, that place almost shakes when people are thumbing their hands on the glass and everything. So... You know, I don't know. Yankee Stadium came in 37 on this list. Um, Arrowhead Stadium is another good stadium. Yankee Stadium came in 37. Um, 
Let's see. MetLife Stadium for the Jets and the Giants came in 61 on this list. The Barclay Center. I mean, these are all pretty decent arenas. Soldier Field, 72. You got to be kidding me. People love Soldier Field. Um, so those are some that kind of shocked me. Now, here we go. Here's the top 30. Uh, number 30, the Rocket Mortgage Field House for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Number 29, Minute Maid Field. Number 28, Dodger Stadium. Number 27, Madison Square Garden. That's like the mecca of sports and entertainment. What are they talking about? Whoever made this list, this is why I'm reading it, is on crack. Like, seriously, like, put the mess down, whoever did this list. Um, number 26, Crypto.com Arena, where the Lakers and the Clippers play. Uh, 25, the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Number 24, AT&T Stadium in Dallas. Um, number 23, T-Mobile Park. Number 22, Comerica Park. Number 21, Chase Field. Um, number 20, City Field, where the Mets play. Um, 19, Petco Park. Uh, let's see, number 18, Paycom Center, where Oklahoma City Thunder play. Uh, Lucas Oil Stadium came in at 17. Uh, number 16 is in Pittsburgh, the Arkshire Stadium. Coors Field in Colorado comes in 15th. Citizens Bank Park is number 14. The Great American Ballpark is 13. Progressive Field is 12. American Family Field comes in number 11. Target Field comes in 10. Miami's uh, Casia Center comes in 9. Wrigley Field in Chicago uh, comes in number 8. That's definitely a top 10 stadium. Fenway Park, number 7. That should be like closer to the top 3. My God. Uh, Lumen Field for Seattle comes in number 6. Oracle Park in San Francisco comes in number 5. Bush Stadium for St. Louis comes in number 4. Camden Yards comes in number 3. PNC Park, number two, and number one, Lambeau Field, where the Packers play. This had to be a Packer fan that did this, because there's no way in hell that anybody that's not a Packer fan would rate Lambeau Field at number one. <clears throat> you got to be kidding me. I would put Fenway Park, Wrigley Field in there, maybe, but come on, Lambeau is not that great of a place. I've been there. I've seen the inside of it. Never seen a game there, but I've seen that. Not that good. I'm looking too. I don't see the Sox Park on here. Did he even make it? I'm looking now. Oh, yeah. Guaranteed rate field for the Sox came in 57th. Jesus. I mean, it's not great, but I'd say it's at least top 40. I'd have put it somewhere in the top 40. United Center should have been in the top 10. Michael Jordan built that house. Come on. Yankee Stadium should definitely be top 10. You know what? Next week, I'm going to make my top 10 list of the best ball fields. Where is Miller Park? Where, where uh, Milwaukee plays? Where the Milwaukee Brewers play? That should be somewhere in the top 10 also. I'm not even a Brewers fan, but I know this. Yeah. I'm making my own top 20 maybe list for next week. I, I don't even see. Is Milwaukee's ballpark even on here hmm that's insane well like I said that's how they rated it the TD Garden where the um, uh, Boston Celtics play came in number 56 on here US Bank Stadium where the Vikings play is 58 I mean Levi Stadium where San Francisco plays is 87 to me, that'd be top 20. And that's just by seeing it on TV. I've never actually been there. Where's Dallas Cowboys Arena? That didn't even make it. Oh, AT&T is like number 24. But still, that's pretty low for that stadium. I'm surprised. Must not have been a Cowboy fan. Well, next week, I'm going to make my top 20 list. We'll see where mine ranks compared to theirs. Um... So let's move on. Uh, let's talk some Olympic Games. 
Um, here's the metal count as of this morning when I looked it up before I did my show. Here we go. So we'll start at the bottom. Ireland has four. I'm not doing every country, just the top whatever's on this list. Um, Ireland has four gold medals, three bronze, and seven total. The Ukraine has three gold, two silver, three bronze, and eight total. Uh, Sweden has three gold, three silver, and two bronze for eight. So does Hungary has the same. They have eight with three, three, and two. Uh, Romania has three gold, four silver, and one bronze for eight medals. New Zealand has three gold, six silver, and one bronze for ten. Uh, Spain, two gold medals, three silver, six bronze for eleven total. Brazil has two gold, five silver, and seven bronze, 14 total there. Germany has eight gold, five silver, and five bronze, uh, 18 total for them. Canada sitting at six gold, four silver, and nine bronze for 19. The Netherlands has nine gold, five silver, and six bronze for 20. Italy is coming in, my homeland <laughs> has nine gold, 10 silver, Eight bronze for 27 total um, medals. South Korea has 12 gold, 8 silver, and 7 bronze for 27. Um, Japan has 12 gold, 6 silver, 13 bronze for 31 total. Australia has 18 gold, 12 silver, and 11 bronze for 41 total medals. <clears throat> Sorry, Great Britain. Uh, they're sitting at 12 gold, 17 silver, and 20 bronze for 49. France, the home country, has 13 gold, 17 silver, and 21 bronze for 51. China has 25 gold, uh, 23 silver, and 17 bronze for 65. And, of course, the dominant is the United States has 27 gold, 35 silver, and 32 bronze medals. Everybody wants to know, how is Simone Biles doing? Amazing, as always. Uh, so far in the Olympics, she won three gold and a silver, uh, zero bronze. She got a gold for a woman's artistic individual all around. Uh, woman, she got another gold for woman's artistic team all around. Uh, she got the gold for woman's vault artistic gymnastics. And then she got a silver for woman's floor artistic gymnastics so they were asking her is she going to stay and do another olympics in four years she really didn't want to answer the question she did say you know never say never of course she did the whole like michael jordan said it a bunch of people said it um but she right now has seven gold medals and she is right now closing in on larissa Nina's nine that she has obviously I don't think Simone Biles has any more uh, medals to get so does she stay and try to beat that in the next Olympics you gotta figure she already has seven she only needs nine to do it so that would be three more next in four years so We'll see if she stays. If she doesn't, if she decides to retire and maybe start a family, because she is starting to be in her 30s now. Um, let's see exactly how old Simone Biles is. I mean, obviously, you want to have kids not too late in life. You know, obviously, you don't want to do it too close to 40 for your first one. So, you know, if you think about it, she's 27 now. The next Olympics will be four years from now. She would be 31. She could still start a family after that. She could technically start a family now and have one and still be able to be in shape for the Olympics because it's really four years from now. So, I mean, if they started to try now and had a baby within two years, she'd have two years to get back into her shape for the Olympics. So, you know, I mean, I just want to throw this out there in the universe. Simone Biles now lives in Chicago. She represents the Chicago Bears family. She's a seven-time gold medalist. Jonathan Owens, her husband, <laughs> he needs to help us bring a Super Bowl to Chicago so he could be a Super Bowl champion and she can be 
a gold medalist in the Olympics. There you go. What a power couple that would be. Plus, if you are any part of a Chicago Bears team that brings a championship, I don't care if you're the towel boy swinging the towel at the other end of the bench, you're going to be a hero in Chicago for the rest of your life if you win us a Super Bowl. You, you don't even have to play. You could just be there. So that's the medal count. Next week I will have the final medal count um, because it does end on Sunday, the closing ceremony. So um, I will be bringing that to you this week. I will do the final medal count. We still have a couple more days of games left. Um, obviously it's Thursday, so it's still got, what, Friday, Saturday, possibly a few morning games on Sunday before they do the closing ceremonies. So, yeah, we will definitely talk about the Olympics and the big Olympics winners next week in the show about the final Olympics. That's it. I can't believe it's been over, over two weeks already for the Olympics. That's crazy to think about. That's how fast that time went. Uh, let's go into uh, SummerSlam. WWE SummerSlam was this weekend, and what an event that was. My gosh, that was a great thing. Roman Reigns returned. It's funny because they said his stunning return. They've been saying for weeks that he was going to come back. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> here was the, um, let's see, all the results from it. Uh, in order, Liv Morgan defeated Rhea Ripley with Dirty Dominic Mysterio by pinfall. Obviously, Dominic turned on Rhea at the end and helped um, Liv Morgan retain her championship, giving her a kiss and getting rid of Mommy. So there's no more Mommy, now it's, da and now it's Daddy Dom. Uh, and that went for 15 minutes and 55 seconds. Uh, second match of the night, Braun Breaker. Brought home singles gold. The first time ever in the history of the Steiners to do that. Um, he defeated Sami Zayn, who was the champion by pinfall in 5 minutes and 40 seconds. That was the shortest match on the card out of 7. Um, LA Knight. Yeah. He defeated Logan Paul with Machine Gun Kelly by his side. That's right. Logan Paul brought Machine Gun Kelly. Don't know why. It's kind of funny. Uh, a 12-minute match. And L. A night, yeah, he's your new uh, United States champion. A long overdue. Uh, the uh, fourth match of the night, Nia Jax defeated Bailey by pinfall to win it. Tiffany Stratton uh, came out looking like she was going to cash in her money in the bank, and she got knocked off the apron by Bailey. Bailey got distracted, and then Nia Jax with the win. At the end, they kind of teased what Tiffany Stratton might turn on, on Nia, or Nia Jax, but she didn't. Not yet. It will happen, though. That match went on for 12 minutes and 30 seconds. One of the big matches of the night, Drew McIntyre defeated CM Punk by pinfall with Seth freaking Rollins as a special guest referee in 17 minutes. Uh, CM Punk... He let, he let his emotions get to him. Seth Rollins picked up the Larry bracelet off the mat so it wouldn't get trampled on. Put it on his wrist. CM Punk noticed it and got in the face of Seth Rollins. That gave the distraction to Drew McIntyre. And boom, Drew McIntyre gets the win. Uh, so CM Punk, yeah, that was kind of sad. Uh, Gunther is the new world heavyweight champion. That was amazing. I am so happy for the guy. He's going to be walking into Bash in Berlin in a couple of weeks as champion. I'll talk more about that in a second. Um, but he defeated Damian Priest with Finn Balor turning on Damian. That's right. Judgment Day. Is it no more? We're going to find out in a minute. I'll talk about Raw right after that. Uh, and then, of course, Cody Rhodes defeated Sola Sequoia after Roman Reigns came down in a Bloodline Rule match. The match lasted 29 minutes. And Roman Reigns came out, Superman punched and speared Solo, looked right over at Cody Rhodes, nodded his head, and walked out. Cody Rhodes gets the win. What a match that was! Uh, it was amazing, it was great. Jelly Roll performed a couple of songs. He also came out. The Miz was host. The Miz 
and our truth came out and they did a three-way um, five knuckle or 15 knuckle shuffle on uh, Grayson Waller so that was amazing uh, your commentators were Michael Cole Corey Graves Pat McAfee uh, Spanish commentators was Jerry Soto and Marcelo Rodriguez uh, ring announcer of course was Samantha Irvin special or referees were Jason Ayers Dan Angler Daphne LaShawn Eddie Ortega Chad Patton Ryan Tran and of course Seth freaking Rollins uh, pre-show panel was Jamie Redman, Big E, Wade Barrett, Peter Rosenberg, and X-Pac. I even know he was uh, a commentator. I didn't watch the whole pre-show. Uh, but yeah. So, it's pretty crazy. It was a great night. I'm excited. Um, I wish we had an aftermath on here. Uh, so now, Bash in Berlin. It's going to be coming up in a few weeks on August 30th. Let's see if they named any matches yet. I know we have one in the bag. So let's see. Bash in Berlin, WWE. Let's see if they've got a main event for it. We already do. Randy Orton came out the next night and he challenged. That's going to be an early one. Saturday, August 31st at 11.30 a.m. It's in Berlin, which is Germany. They are ahead of us by, what, six, seven hours so that makes sense. Uh, let's see. I don't see a card for it yet. We do know Randy Orton came out and challenged Gunther because of, of course, his... Uh... <laughs> Hang on. I'm trying to see really quick if they got one. They have predictions. So let's see. Well, they have some predictions already. So let's see if any of these. This one won't happen. Because they've already announced it. So they're just predicting that. Uh, let's go through these prediction matches really quick for Bash in Berlin. Because we should have more matches uh, coming up this week named, but we already have one, Randy Orton versus Gunther. Um, of course, everybody knows Randy Orton wasn't fully pinned at King of the Ring. Uh, it was a controversial decision by the referee, but it stood, and yeah, so we will definitely be having that match. Um, he said, since I can't get the King of the Ring, I'll take your title. Judgment Day. Let's talk about that really quick. The new Judgment Day. Finn Balor. Dirty Dom, Liv Morgan, okay, and then, of course, Carlito and J.D. McDonough. So the five of them, the only two out, Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley. Um, so, yeah, they attacked Damian Priest. Rhea came down and helped them. So that's definitely going to be a new team right there. Maybe they'll get their own faction together and they'll bring in a few more people that don't like Finn and them and it'll be a uh, maybe Survivor Series type match or something. We'll see what they do. Uh, so here's some predictions. WWE Women's Championship match. Minchin versus Nia Jax. Could happen. Tiffany Stratton still got that money in the brain, uh, bank little purse that she's carrying around now. Uh, WWE Tag Team Championship match not going to happen. Cody Rose and Randy Orton versus the Bloodline. Randy Orton already has a match. Maybe Cody and Kevin Owens. Maybe Cody and Roman. Who knows? We'll see. Um, they're going to, who knows, you know, this Friday on SmackDown, anything can happen tomorrow. Um, they're projecting Intercontinental Championship match. Ija Drugnoff versus Braun Breaker. That's a possibility. Uh, Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley versus Dominic and Liv Morgan. Most deaf going to happen. Okay. You don't need every title defended at every pay-per-view. Liv and Dom versus Damian and Rhea would be amazing. That would be a cool match. Uh, World Heavyweight Championship. They're, they're saying Guther and Drew McIntyre. Not going to happen, obviously, because they've already named the World Championship match. Um, so that's not going to happen. Uh, Cody Rhodes still out there for a match, possibly with maybe the Bloodline. Maybe he'll face Solo in a rematch, or maybe he'll face off. Maybe he'll team with Roman to take on Solo. we got to see how Jacob Fatu is. He did get hurt. Um, nothing 
Let's see if anything's come out of that yet. Because he obviously did get hurt. Uh, let's see. There's some WWE rumors on a few things from Bleacher Report, so let's see what they've got. Update on Lin uh, Becky Lynch's WWE status, whether she'll retire. Despite a post on Instagram referring to her wrestling career in the past tense, Becky Lynch reportedly hasn't informed WWE of any plans to retire. Uh, Lynch could retire without notifying anyone since she is currently a free agent, but sources within WWE said they weren't privy to her retiring and didn't believe she would announce her retirement on Instagram. Most likely not, Becky Lynch will come back and make a retirement speech, maybe have a final match. Um, on Sunday, an episode of Biography, WWE Legends, focused on Lynch's life and career, and it aired on A&E. &E. Uh, let's see. The man took to Instagram afterward and posted the following message accompanied by a photo of herself. It's been a hell of a career. Being the man for all you was an honor. Being the mom for her is a privilege. Thanks for watching my bio. That could go either way, but if she does retire, she's had an amazing career. Let Seth carry the family with the money and you just stay home and raise that little girl. Maybe have another one. Uh, Fatu reportedly has avoided serious injury. Bloodline member Jacob Fatu reportedly may have avoided a serious injury despite appearing to injure his leg during the main event. According to Dave Meltzer, take this with a grain of salt by Uncle Dave, Fatu was hurting after SummerSlam, but he was also told the injury wasn't that bad. Uh, let's see. He also noted that Fatu was always supposed to sell the effects of jumping through the announce table so as to avoid a confrontation with Reigns and save it for a later date. Makes sense. Obviously, they don't want that yet because Jacob Fatu and Roman Reigns is going to be a banger. That match is going to be awesome. Um, it says, coincidentally... He could have legitimately gotten injured during that process. He was supposed to sell it, but he might have really got injured. But it isn't clear if he will miss any major time yet. Um, now, he doesn't do a ton, so... Uh, Reigns, uh, Damian Priest are now reportedly internally listed as baby faces for WWE. So now they are going to be good guys, which everybody kind of knew that. Uh, so yeah, that's the haps right now. That's what's going on in the WWE world. SmackDown is this Friday. Will, Ro will Roman be there? We don't know. I haven't heard any announcement on if he's going to be there yet. I'm sure he will be, though. He's not going to miss the SmackDown after SummerSlam, and I'm sure he's got a lot to say. So we'll see uh, tomorrow night on SmackDown, and we'll definitely talk about it next week. All right, so let's do this now. So I want to talk really quick about... NCAA college football is starting in a few weeks with their preseason. Uh, so let's see where they're ranking uh, the top 25 teams going into the preseason. Uh, number 25, they got Iowa. Number 24 is Kansas. 23, USC. Look at how much USC dropped off with Caleb Williams leaving. Because he was they were like, what, top 15, top 10 last year at one point. Uh, they dropped off pretty good. Uh, number 22, North Carolina State. Number 21, Arizona. Number 20, Texas A&M. 19, Miami. Number 18, Oklahoma State. Number 17, Kansas State. Number 16, Oklahoma Sooners. Number 15, Tennessee. Number 14, Clemson. Number 13, Utah. Number 12, LSU. Number 11, Missouri. Now here's the top 10. Uh, voted on by the coaches poll for the preseason rankings. Number 10, Florida State. Number 9, Penn State. Number 8, Michigan. Damn, the national champion starting at number 8. And that's, I think, because J.J. McCarthy and a bunch of them left. And Jim Harbaugh's gone now. So, yeah, they're starting at number 8. Damn, slap in the face. Uh, number 7, Notre Dame. Number 6, Old Miss. Number 5, Alabama. Roll Tide. Number four, Texas. Number three, Oregon. Number two, Ohio State. Tell me how Ohio State is before Michigan on this list. And number one, Georgia. Uh, so, yeah. I, I'm 
you've got Alabama at five. You've got Michigan at eight, who just won the national championship. You have Washington, who didn't eat, who I don't even see them on this list. They're not even in the top 25, and they just made it to the national championship. But you got Ohio State at number two. Oh, by Ohio State. No, that doesn't happen, but whatever. We'll see when the season starts. Preseason kicks off. Let's see. Let's see when the preseason starts. <clears throat> so let's see. August 24th is when they start everything up. Uh, so we'll be doing some fun stuff with that coming up in the next few weeks. But yeah, <clears throat> it's really, really sad. I'm embarrassed for them making that list. Seriously. I, I don't even know what to say to that. But we'll see whatever. Uh, so let's go into our movie news. Um, there's not much going on right now, TV and movie wise. So last segment of the day, let's do it. Let's do our movies and see where everything came in. Next week, I am going to talk about all the major Marvel cameos that was in Deadpool and Wolverine. I want to wait one more week because it's only the third week and some people still haven't seen it. But next week, we will have spoilers on that. Um, so let's go into our top box office for the week. Let's see where Deadpool and Wolverine came in last weekend. Number 10 was the movie Ponyo. It looks like a kid's movie. It's a cartoon. Uh, 800K last weekend, 17 million total gross, um, in one week released. Number nine, The Firing Squad, in its first week, did 893,000 weekend gross and a total gross of the same. Uh, number eight, A Quiet Place Day One, did a weekend gross last weekend of 1.4 million. It's done 138 million in six weeks. Long Legs came in number seven with a weekend gross of 4.2 million, total gross of 68 million in four weeks out. Uh, number six, Harold on the Purple Crayon. I don't know if that's a movie to get high to or take your kids to. Uh, weekend gross of $6 million, total gross of $8.2 million in the first week out. Number five, Inside Out 2, still going strong in the top five. Weekend gross of $6.8 million, total gross of $629 million in eight weeks. Um, Despicable Me 4, still in the top five. Weekend gross of $11 million. It's made $319 million in five weeks. Uh, movie Trap by M. Night Shyamalan came out last weekend to a weekend gross of $15 million, Total gross of 19 Twisters still coming in at number two. Still going strong. $23 million last weekend. Made $202 million total gross in three weeks. Not bad. But Deadpool and Wolverine, last week at $97 million at the box office, $421 million total gross in two weeks. So if you want to look at numbers of, of Deadpool and Wolverine right now, it's been out two weeks, so it's going into its third week tomorrow. Let's look at what some of these other movies have done. Okay. Twisters has been out three weeks, one week longer than Deadpool and Wolverine, and did $202 million. Wolverine and Deadpool has done $421 million. Okay. Despicable Me, four, came in huge and strong in its first weekend, first two weekends. $319 million in five weeks. Deadpool and Wolverine, $421 in two. Inside Out 2, $629 million in eight weeks. Deadpool and Wolverine, $421 in two. So if you think about that, these, these movies have beat out Bad Boys, which did pre pretty decent at the movies. It's not in the top ten anymore, but it was there for a very long time. Okay? In fact, if you look right now, where Bad Boys is, it's still coming in at number 11. Not horrible. Not horrible at all for a movie that was out. And it's also streaming on demand now. You can rent it for 20 bucks. I just rented it for $20 last weekend, 
and it was great. I had a good time with it, uh, watching it. So for a movie that's already out to rent for 20 bucks, all these people still went to go see it in the theater. Not horrible. But yeah, so we'll see what it does, you know, what um, Deadpool and Wolverine does this week. But I believe it's going to eclipse Despicable Me. F um, well, it's already ahead of that. But let me see, what's the other one? Inside Out 2. It's going to eclipse Inside Out 2 in the next few weeks. If Inside Out 2 only does the 6 million, 5 million range like it's been doing, it's going to eclipse that. If Deadpool and Wolverine can still pull off like around 90 million, 80 to 90 million a weekend for the next few weekends. People are going to see it multiple times. That's insane. But it's a good movie. Uh, next weekend, uh, we are going to talk, or next week, we'll talk more football. We'll see how I did preseason week one. We'll talk, or preseason week two, technically. Uh, next week, preseason week three, we'll see how I do there. Uh, we'll make our predictions. We'll talk more about Bash in Berlin for WWE. We'll find out what the final medal count was and what exactly the United States won their medals in because we'll have an Olympics recap um, for the whole thing of what went on. Uh, we'll talk more Deadpool and Wolverine. We're going to talk about the 15 Marvel characters that were in the movie as cameos. So if you haven't seen it yet, go see it this weekend so you can listen to my show and find out who you may have missed while you're watching it. You know, sometimes you're watching and you're not like fully invested in every part of the movie and you might miss something. Uh, next weekend, we'll talk about TV shows returning. That's right. In, in a few weeks, we're going to have TV back uh, for those who like to watch uh, primetime shows. I'm going to talk about new shows, though, not the old shows. I'm going to talk about the new shows coming to the different networks. We'll talk about that. So we're going to talk about a lot next week. We'll have a good show, just like we always do. Um, enjoy your weekend. I'll be on vacation this weekend in Lake Geneva. I'm excited to go to Wisconsin again and be back to the place that I went a bunch of times in my childhood and have taken my kids to already. Uh, we're going to have a good time. Uh, so until next week, I love you all. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I love you so much. I'll see everybody next week. Peace. This is the end of our broadcast day.